Hi, I'm Steve Lanford and welcome to Sure in the Saddle. Back by popular demand, we've got Chuck Potter from Hoof Cinch. Now, Jen and I drove up to, to Minnesota here. We're spending the day and tomorrow with Chuck and we're gonna go around, visit a couple different horses and we're gonna have Chuck sort of enlighten us on Hoof Cinch, how he's using it to treat founder. And uh, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Introducing the Steve Lavitt Horsemanship Snaffle Bit. With all that we ask of our horses, don't they deserve the very best? The Steve Lavitt Horsemanship Snaffle delivers better results with your horse's comfort as a top priority. Smooth, broken mouthpiece providing the right amount of cue, where you need it, and how you need it. Copper inlays making the bit more palatable for your horse at stevelambit.com. All right, we're back. We've got Lori with us in Pretty Girl. Lori, tell us how you sort of came upon Chuck Potter and the hoof cinch and, and some of the issues that we're having with Pretty Girl. Well, back in January of 2021, she could barely walk and we didn't know what was wrong. So we called the vet. Um, and at that point in time, um, we had called the farrier back a few times and it wasn't getting any better. And in May of 2021, someone recommended Chuck along with the vet to try the braces and so we did and in May as soon as Chuck put the braces on pretty girl she was able to walk so on this one here Chuck we are how many weeks into this now uh, we're looking at 10 weeks I, I believe we're right around 10 to 12 weeks in so this would be sort of like midterm right all right mm -hmm. um, I could see it from here uh, show us what we're, what we're seeing here with Pretty Girl and the hoof cinch. Sure, when we look at the foot, what we want to look at is the, the change above and below the hoof cinch as it grows down. So this horse has actually knocked hers off a couple of times, okay. which is not a normal event, but it right. can happen. And we've had to replace them, so they're up a little bit higher. Uh, we've started them back at the starting position again, but you can see where they grew down to right. uh, initially. I mean, and there's an apparent <clears throat> difference on hoof angle from where the hoof cinch is to the, right. where the, the founder was happening. Right. Not only does it stabilize the hoof capsule to reduce the pain okay. that the animal feels like this animal, the day we put it on, it was walking. And so that, <clears throat> explain that because I know there's there's viewers at home right now mm -hmm. that what you just said has just literally they've either th th <laughs> you're blowing people's minds. They passed out. They yeah. passed out. So they're gonna. <laughs> so we should probably go to commercial break or something to let them come too. But tell us what the hoof cinch is doing mm -hmm. in the hoof capsule that allows that pain to start to subside like right after the hoof cinch is put on. Sure, when we, when we put the hoof cinch on, what has happened inside the hoof capsule is the bone has rotated down away from the hoof wall. And so, a pretty girl, how <clears throat> many degrees? We're looking at about 14 okay. degrees, so okay. it was pretty significant. And what happens is those lamini hold the bone in and when it pulls, they stretch like this. And that's where the discomfort's coming that's from. That's where the pain is. Okay. It's in the front of the hoof. So no matter what we do on the bottom, we're not gonna relieve the pain unless we stabilize the front part of the hoof capsule. Okay. And that's why these things work very quickly. <clears throat> so we're trimming her just yeah. sort of regular, nothing fancy. Right, well, she's on a normal trim cycle. So we're looking at six to eight week normal okay. trim cycle, okay. nothing special. We didn't put shoes on this horse here. Yeah. Nope. There's, there's always <laughs> one in every crowd, Chuck. So we're putting the hoof cinch on to stabilize that growth and right. that alleviates the pain. Right. Okay. So yeah, once the bone rotates away and the lamini are stretched, what we're doing is stopping that flex of the bone and the lamini every time the horse bears weight. Okay. And that's what reduces the pain. Now, the other thing that we've noticed with these is that they also stimulate the growth. Okay. And, that, and that's why we're able to, in just this short amount of time, have that much new growth down on this a, foot. That's at least an inch of oh, yeah. new growth. And so we're able to do this in less than six months, where normally uh, a year it takes for a horse to grow a toe. All right, so area. we're almost in like a hyper growth mode that it's stimulating that. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of these horses that are in these problems, EMS and different things like right. that, when they have pain, they seem to stimulate anyway and produce a faster foot. You see ponies with real long feet. Right. It's right, the same right. thing. So this just helps stabilize it and redirect the growth back along the bone. That's what we're seeing in this outer growth. So, so we're just redirecting the hoof growth. Is exactly. That what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. All right. And that's how we'll go back to zero rotation. Right. Okay. All right. So we're looking about halfway 
through treatment on this particular horse. Exactly. And so we'll do a follow-up x-ray okay. to make sure, because if we don't have it all the way, then we'll just reapply until we do. Okay. Yeah. All right. But now we, we, we talked, and I know this was even before we started filming this, this is just part of the whole picture on treating this. Exactly. Yeah. You can't, this thing isn't magic. It doesn't magically make their EMS go away. It right. doesn't magically cure Cushing's or anything right. else. There's the veterinarians have to be involved with the treatment of the problem, the underlying cause. If you don't stop the underlying cause, you are not gonna fix this horse. Okay. And that, so for this one here, we're lucky enough diet uh, has, helped. has helped out tremendously. And a lot of, you know, it used to be, they say, well, you want diet and exercise. Foundered horse, you're not gonna exercise. Correct. Because they can't, well, with the hoof cinches on, they appear to be sound and perfect. Right. So you still gotta be careful. You don't okay. wanna run them out and start exercising just because they can move. Right. Gentle walking, that kind of right. stuff's fine. And we normally just want them to exercise on their own. When, when she's feeling comfortable walking around the pen, she's going to do it. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, well, Lori, thank you very much for sharing. We're here in Minnesota. We've got Chuck Potter with the hoof cinch, and we're joined with Tony and Abby. This is probably one of the coolest stories that I've ever heard. Uh, I, I, we get a lot of feedback from customers that have used the hoof cinch and, and the times that Chuck and I'll talk. Tell us a little bit about Abby's story and how this all sort of happened. Yeah, Abby was probably the most severe founder case that I've ever dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, she foundered so badly that three out of the four feet, the bones actually rotated down through the sole. Okay, which and is for everybody that's mm -hmm. home that has not dealt with a founder case. I mean, I know mm -hmm. from where I'm coming from my region, that's the point where as soon as one pops through, they throw up their hands. It's time to probably put her down. She's only gonna last a day or two. Yeah. And we've got three out of the four hooves. Right, so both okay. back feet and one front foot actually rotated through. Okay. So we have the, the, the solar corium, the live tissue from inside sticking out of the feet. Okay. And, and on, on three of the four feet. And so what we have to do so is actually is she, close is she, that back up. Is she standing at this time? No. What, what, is, what is her state? Yeah, she's laying down for she's down. most of the time, 23 hours a day. Yeah? At least. Yeah. So she, she's not getting up. So we're, so how did we deal with her just laying on the ground? Yeah, I had to roll her. You, you, you moved her around. So she I actually uh, rolled her so and, that mm -hmm. she didn't get them big sores. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and then Chuck said you guys brought in sand. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so she learned to lay in the stand, and this was just out in the pasture. Where did you have her? Out back. Out, just okay. on the other side and of this barn in here. Lot. Okay. Oh, right, in a little lot. All right. All right. So, um, tell us how you treated her and what, okay. what the process you went so, through. So, yeah, the whole thing with this horse is um, we had to figure out why it had foundered. Okay. Okay. It ended up it has EMS. It's, okay. it's at the right age, a little overweight. Right. Um, and it, it, we did the blood test showed EMS. So Dr. Daly got that under control. Okay. They say the hoof cinch is just part of a system. It's part of the big picture to fix your horse. Okay. And that when it founders. So we have to stop why. And right. then we take care of the mechanical part. Okay. So that's what the hoof cinch does. Now with her, we had to add the addition of the heart bar shoes. Okay. Because we had the bones coming through. How, how did you do that with her on the ground? Yeah, we actually had to shoe her and do everything while she's laying on the ground. Okay. So I would get in between her feet there and this horse was so gentle and she knew we were here to help. Mm -hmm. uh, she never offered to kick me. I mean, I'm hammering nails into her feet right. while the bones are sticking out. Okay. And she never offered to kick me. So there's some severe pain right. going on with this when, I'm do when I have to apply this, but she took the thing. And then the treatment to keep the flies out of the sole area so we didn't get maggots inside right, and stuff right, during right. the fly season. And that's uh, Tony, he got out, put the sunshade up, treated her feet daily. Uh, made sure she had food and water, got the sand in so she didn't get bed sores. So you would just bring her the food and water because she wasn't getting up at the beginning. Right. Okay. Not have right. to clean the poop up from behind her, right, and all right. that kind of she's stuff. She's sort of bedridden. This yeah. is just mm -hmm. like a human page. She's exactly. Bedridden. That's sort of amazing. Show us what, how the how the hoof sort of came back because how, how long ago did this happen? Well, it's been three years now okay. for this horse. And we had her up and going uh, longer than uh, half the day in about what a month yeah it was there so it took yeah. about a month to get her where she was moving around most of the day okay and in two months she was up permanently okay and but that, so. the, the hurdle was that first couple two or three weeks of uh, of a horse that's sort of 
immobile. I right. mean, 20, 23 hours or more a day. Well, when, when you're dealing with this, with the bone sticking out too, the heart bar shoe has to be reset quite often because okay. it relies on pressure. And okay. that, so that tab against the frog and this, so it's pulling down and pushing okay. all at the same all right. time. And it has to be reset often. And the horse took all of this stuff without drugging it even. Okay. And Should, that, could you show us the hose right sure. now? So she's just a little flat sole. Yeah. But that, that's well, not she's, from... Well, she's, she's actually like always like this. Okay. Yeah, so Thank I mean, her sure. these, these feet are actually back to normal. Okay. And that for her. Yeah, so the, the bone rotated through right here in this area. Um, and that's where we had the solar corium sticking out of this foot. And you can see now that it's all healed up. With, with Abby here, we treated the, <laughs> the, the cause of the founder with, with, with a, a good vet. And then you treated it with the heart bar shoe and the hoof cinch. And now Abby's living her days like any other 20. Like a queen. Like a queen. <laughs> there you go, Tony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she is. Which is good. But it's that way because you took really good care of her. I'm going to tell mm. you something. Abby's just like a perfect example of a whole team sort of coming together to make this work because you can have the best vet, you can have the best farrier, but if you don't have a horse owner that's willing to go out there and, and go, you went above and beyond what 90% of the horse owners are gonna do. So thank you very much. I'm sure Abby thanks you very much, but thanks for showing uh, and sharing the story with Abby with us. You're welcome. We're here actually with Chuck Potter and Eeyore now, Eeyore is yours, correct? Eeyore belongs to me, yeah. Tell us a little bit about Eeyore's story with the hoof cinch. Well, this uh, January, Eeyore started limping. Okay. And they're pretty stoic animals, so it takes a lot of pain before you normally start to see anything. With the donkey. With the donkey, so um, I assumed it was an abscess initially. Okay. And that's so why I came out and I looked for it. I couldn't find it, so I figured, well, I'll give him a couple of days. And it just wasn't getting better. And then I started to see the other foot limp as well. Okay. So uh, I got a hold of Dr. Daly to get x-rays, but it was gonna be a week and a half or so before she could get up. Okay. So we went ahead and we did a, a test and we just went ahead and put the cinches on. All right. Since you can't hurt the animal with them. Okay. And that you, you can't, it's not possible to do any damage to them. Very well, we'll see. It instantly made him better. And he was walking better. As soon as I tightened him up, he, he was doing so much better. And, uh, and then about oh, a week and a half in, we had x-rays done. Right. And he did have uh, between seven and 14 degrees of rotation on both front feet. Okay. But he was sound the whole time. Okay. And uh, from the day we put the cinches on, he's never limped again. So the, the, the hoof <laughs> cinches, when, when you're talking about making him sound, you just took the pain away. Right, yeah, that's all it did. We didn't correct anything yet, but okay. we took the pain away. And he's been sound ever since, but we tried something a little different with Eeyore. Okay. And that we went ahead and after the x-rays, I only left him on for about four more weeks. I wanted to make sure we had all the pain relieved. Okay. And then I took him off. And I wanted to wait until we hit the 16 weeks and then we reshot the x-rays. Okay. There was no difference in the x-rays. We still had the same amount of rotation because we didn't leave the cinches on okay. uh, to finish redirecting the growth. So what we're going to do is actually put another set on him right. to, for a full 16 weeks and then shoot the final x-ray to show people that what it, it'll do the same thing mechanically for any stage of founder. Because right. at this stage, we're not relieving pain, we're just redirecting growth. Okay. And that's all right. Yeah. So he's sort of becoming a, a, like the little. He's a guinea pig. I was just going to say guinea pig, <laughs> but I don't want to call him a guinea pig. Yeah, we. But, we, but he's not in pain right now. No. You but, can watch him. I mean, he walks around just fine. He, there's no pain. He hasn't limped since the day I put the hoof cinches on. So <laughs> even with the rotation in his hoof, his how does his hoof look right now? Oh, they're, they look perfectly normal. You can't actually see okay. any damage or okay. anything. I mean, if, if, when you're trimming him, you cannot see any signs of founder. All right, so unless you <clears> took an x-ray, he would look like he was perfect. Right. All yeah. right, so now you're gonna put the hoof cinches back on for, what was it again? We'll do 16 weeks uh, with him, which is the normal recommended time for the hoof cinch. Okay. And um, to, so now we can redirect the new growth back along the bone. Okay. So when we're done, we should have three degrees or less. So uh, have you done this before? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. we, I, I've done all stages of founder over, well, what, we've been in nine, 10 years now. We've right. been in business with the hoof cinch. So I've done everything. I mean, horses had been foundered 10 years that were sound now, but the bone still was sitting here. We, we just redirect it. Okay. And it, so it'll do any stage of founder. All right, well, good luck, Eeyore. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Yeah, thanks, Steve. 
All right, Chuck, we're sort of wrapping up two days spent with you. You've shown us a couple horses that the hoof cinch has helped with the founder. Tell us a couple of things that we should be, the viewers at home should be looking for if they suspect founder. Mm -hmm. and, you know, a couple tips on what, you know, what the horse owner needs to know. Usually, um, EMS is the normal cause for founder. Okay. So what that is, it's like type two diabetes in humans but the same drugs that work on humans don't work on horses. So their insulin's running rampant through their system. It's not attaching, it's not allowing the sugars to come out of the bloodstream into the muscle. And they're ending up other places. And a newer theory is it's attaching down in the foot and causing a problem. So explain this newer theory because yesterday evening we were mm -hmm. sort of talking and, and sort of spitballing and uh, a lot of reasons that I'll hear as a trainer, my horse founders, they were out in pasture too long, mm. road founder, things like that. So sure. explain the difference of the two. Well, EMS causes a chemical or an endocrine system problem in the horse. Okay. So something's gone wrong internally, okay? So the insulin's not getting used, the sugars are up, insulin's up, and it, it causes problems in the horse, and it does cause them to founder. And the new theory, kind of a newer one that I've recently set through a seminar on, was a veterinarian describing how she believes that the insulin is looking for an attaching point. And so it's ending up inside the hoof capsule at the, what they call the IGF receptors. Okay. And there are growth receptors in the foot. And they're actually growing the lamini instead of it being um, a tear. We, we really don't know for sure okay. any of this stuff. I mean, everybody's guessing because we don't know the actual trigger okay. that makes a horse founder. But things horse owners can look for is, is your horse overweight? Okay. okay, you look at for the fat pockets by the uh, withers mm -hmm. and just above the tail. Mm -hmm. And does it just look overweight? Is it around 15 years old getting in that range? Because that is where we start to see the most cases of EMS. Okay. Um, well, I just finished a class with uh, a university on um, the horse's endocrine system. And one of the things that I found interesting uh, was the percentages that they assume have EMS or Cushing's disease, and it keeps getting higher and higher the older the horse is. They may have it, but never show any symptoms, symptoms. of it. Uh, and blood test is the only way you would actually know for some of these horses that they actually have it. Okay. But as an owner, uh, proper feeding of your horse, um, not just letting them wander all day out in the pasture. So management issues help. Exactly, okay. yeah, given the right feeds um, for what your horse does for a living because like yours are workhorses, right. so they have to eat differently than my guys who are just pasture pets. Sometimes we're killing them with kindness. Exactly, there's yeah. people I go to, the horses founder, and say, you've got to put them on a dry lot. They and don't wanna hear that. No, you can't that. give them those treats. Right. And, uh, and they're like, well, I can't do that. I said, well, you're killing your horse. That's exactly it, that's exactly it. And yeah, so the, the things people work for is one, the overweight horse, mm -hmm. okay? Then we get into, and the farrier needs to be aware of what he's looking for on the feet okay. as well, because there are signs that show up in the soles of the feet. Uh, we had Eeyore out yesterday. Mm -hmm. So you said that we've got about 14, 15 degrees of rotation, mm -hmm. but there's no pain. So he walks off, he trots, he looks great. Right. So as a farrier or horse owner, is there a sign that we can look for looking at that hoof to sort of give us an indication that there is some rotation? Oh yeah. Yeah, you'll see what's called, if, if you have a lot of rotation and over time, as things grow down, you will see the lamini present at the bottom of the foot okay. and it can be referred to as seedy toe okay. and several different things it just depends on what track the farriers go on for what they're going to call it so if okay. you're a more naturalist or a, right. an actual school trained farrier that kind of stuff they, you have different names for things so what we start to look for is more in the toe area here you'll have a stretch okay area and that and that's one sign but sort of like white line disease well, no, white Lyme disease is bacteria eating up into okay. the hoof wall. Okay. And that, and you'll see that it's just a separation. Okay. Of it. And right. you'll see the black uh, remains where the bacteria has been. Okay. All right. But uh, CD toe is just more of a stretch looking area. So uh, the farrier, that's one thing they can look for. Now, okay. you got to be careful because hoof capsule distortion can give that same presentation. Okay. So if you have a, a swooshed out foot, it can show that same look. And if so you x ray it, a, you can a, be confused. A hoof that's 
that's not being trimmed properly that the growth is causing. That. Yeah, it could be that it's being trimmed properly, but maybe not soon enough. Okay. That kind of stuff, because a lot of people can't afford to have them trimmed often enough. So, so for everybody at home, what's really a good recommended window of time to be trimmed? Well, that's that's really difficult. Okay. And that because there are some animals, if they have a problem like EMS, their right. feet tend to grow faster. Okay. And so they might be on a four to six week schedule. Okay. You know, uh, it's very rare that you ever need four, less than four weeks. Right. Unless you're dealing with a medical condition on the horse where you have to keep applying pressure and it has to like be set. Like you did with Abby where you set the heart Exactly, bar every, every, week. every week. Yeah, okay. we had to reset the pressure. So, um, the, so the farrier can look for the stretch and he has to look too to see if we have distortion in the front of the foot, you know, so like it's got the swoosh look to it. Okay. And that can cause that same thing. The other thing. So that would be like Pretty Girl where we're halfway through the corrective yeah, process. And you see that swoosh the down there, okay. exactly. All right. Um, and then the other thing you look for is when, as a farrier, when you're pairing sole, okay, what you're doing is cleaning off the dead stuff so that you can look for bacteria. You're, you're trying to prevent things, abscesses right. and different things in, the, in disease in the hoof capsule. So when we clean it, we're not digging into the live stuff, we're just cleaning off oh, the dead the, stuff. Okay. And we're looking for bacterial tracks and we're setting the horse up so the soles aren't directly on the ground surface. Okay. But when we're doing that, there's pigments that show up when horses have endocrine system problems. So in the white sole, it's no longer white. Okay. You have this rainbow of colors okay. and that, so it can be peaches, creams, yellows, all the, they're not bruises. Okay. It's a pigment that shows up and it's due to the endocrine system problem. So on an older horse, a farrier could look at this initially and say, okay, we've got a bruised sole. Right. But but it's not. Right. So a bruised sole, after you start cleaning out, it's going to grow away and start coming back to white again, correct? If it's an older case. Yes. Yeah. So you're trimming away the dead stuff right. and then you get down to the clean new. Right. So right. if in the new stuff, you see the pigments, you know that there's an endocrine system okay. problem. All right. So at home, you know, viewers, when they're there with their farrier could be sort of looking and maintaining horse health just mm -hmm. by observing the, a good a good hoof care and everything, how that, that fear is presenting the hoof. Right, and there's horses too that trick us. Okay. I mean, they can be the skinniest thing, they're hard keeper, you know, you're feeding right, them all this right. stuff, and they still have EMS. Okay. And, that, and they can founder as well, but uh, for the most part, I'd say 90% of what I see is horses that are just overweight. Right, right. And, you know, Chuck, I want to thank you again for having us out here. Yeah, it's been we've, a pleasure. We spent two days here with Chuck Potter from Hoof Cinch. This is something that I'm going to tell you, you guys at home, we get emails, we get Facebook messages and stuff like that. We're happy to bring Chuck back because I know there's lots of questions about hoof care, founder. So if you have any questions, shoot Chuck an email, shoot us an email, and hopefully we'll see you at an expo or down the road at a clinic. Thanks for watching. I'm Steve Lampett for Sure in the Saddle.